Find the exact value of the following. Sine inverse of radical 3 over 2. Class, you all have your unit circle memorized. And we have a guest in a room, so you can't make me look bad. So if you don't have your unit circle memorized, what's a good idea right now? Okay, that's too quick. <laughs> to look at your unit circle right now. So if you don't have a copy, that's fine. Open up the back of your book. There's a copy there. All right, so let's start A. I'm going to write pretty much everything out. Sine inverse of radical 3 over 2. Remember, when you take a sine inverse, you're trying to find an angle. So if you want to give this an angle name, fine. We can call it theta. I almost want alpha. But if the sine inverse of radical 3 over 2 is theta, that implies that the sine of theta is radical 3 over 2. Okay. All right. So that's basically what we started with in Chapter 6. Well, here's the fun part. We're looking for the range because uh, we're doing a sine inverse. Sine inverse's range is negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So when you see this, you ask yourself, what angle between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2 is a sine value of radical 3 over 2? I know you're excited, but you are correct, but I'm going to say it again so that everyone could do this. What angle between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2 has a sine value of radical 3 over 2. That's what you ask yourself. So when you first learn division, what they said 30 divided by 6, they would actually tell you 6 times what is 30. Why? Because you just got done with multiplication and you're used to multiplication. So we're going to do the same thing here. The sine of what angle is radical 3 over 2 between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2? 60. So theta is 60 degrees or in radians. Close. 5 or 3. The sine of what angle between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2? Is radical 3 over 2? 60 degrees or pi over 3? Fun. Questions? All right, try not. Tangent inverse of negative 1. This part is optional, but if you want to write tangent inverse of negative 1 equals an angle, I'm going to make up say, uh, uh, alpha there, then that says the tangent of alpha is negative 1. So the question you ask yourself, do you feel lucky? And then the other question you ask yourself, the tangent of what angle between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2 is negative 1? Well, the tangent of 45 degrees is positive 1. Negative 45 degrees. Why couldn't I say 315 degrees? Because, yeah, 315 degrees is not between negative 90 and positive 90. So our answer in degrees has to go from negative 90 to positive 90. So you can say the tangent, I'm sorry, oh, I almost used this to erase. You don't want to do that because it, does, it doesn't do anything. <laughs> Got to put that over there. Okay. So you would say alpha is negative 45 degrees or in radians, Negative pi over 4. So again, the tangent of what angle between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2? Or negative 90, 90. It's negative 1. Negative pi over 4. How could this possibly get worse? Part C, cosine inverse of negative 1. Hmm, we need a new angle name. Zeta? I think that's how you draw a zeta. 
We'll find out. So the cosine of zeta, I think I'm just making that up, is negative 1. All right, the cosine inverse returns a value from 0 to pi, quadrants 1 and 2. So the cosine of what value between 0 and pi, or 0 and 180 degrees, is negative 1. I didn't hear you. I have this thing in my ear. Pi! Or 180 degrees. Awesome.